Hello and welcome to our Foundation of Faith broadcast. Um, I'm really glad that you could join us once again. Uh, this is class two, and we're going to be looking at the integrity of God's Word, the integrity of the Word of God. And the course of this class, you know, we've broken it down into five classes to make it easier for you to digest. The first uh, class is the nature of God himself. I think that's very important. Then we have the reality of God's word. Then class three is the covenant and the promise. Class four, the effect of filling our hearts with God's word. And then our last and final class is a, is a practical class and it is called acknowledging and experiencing God's word. So those are the five classes. Um, so today we are just going to do a bit of, you know, um, intro as we look at the nature of God himself. And I think it's important that we look at the nature of God in the context of the kingdom of God. You know, we talk about the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. For example, the book of Daniel tells us in Daniel 7, 14, it says, and he was given dominion, glory, and kingship, so that in every people, nation, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom, that's a word there, his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Again, if we look at Hebrews 12, 28, it says, Therefore, receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, we may have grace by which we may serve God well-pleasing with fear. So where we understand uh, that there is a kingdom, I think that's very important. Um, we understand that a king speaks of dominion. And the speak, king, kingdom also speaks of the word king or rulership. So we're looking essentially at the integrity of that king. And the context of what we're looking at it is God himself. And I think this is important, particularly in this day, where for many of us, um, our word, we struggle to make our word our bond. And we give our word, sometimes in business, as, as business people, for example, you give your word a commitment on a transaction. And if you do not have, you may be willing to come good on your promise, but you may not have the necessary resources. So when we talk about kingdom, we're looking at all the resources really at the disposal of God. When we're looking at the integrity of God's word, what are the resources at the disposal of God? And to help us, let's look at the word integrity. Integrity stems from a Latin word, which I like, meaning integer, which means whole and complete. Integer is spelled I-N-T-E-G-E-R. It requires an inner sense of wholeness and a consistency of character. So when you say integrity, you're looking at a completeness. You're looking at an inner sense of wholeness, a consistency of character. When you are in integrity, I underline that in my notes, when you are in, not that when you have integrity, when you are in integrity. So you can have a marriage certificate, but you're not in a marriage. Is that correct? So when you are in integrity, people should be able to visibly see it through your actions. They see it through your words, they through your decisions, your methods, and your outcomes. And I love that example of the marriage. So you can have a marriage certificate, but you're not in that marriage. So when they look at you, they look at you with your spouse, they see the way you relate your actions, your words, your decisions. They realize that you have the certificate, but you're not in the marriage. So when you're in integrity, you're whole, you're consistent. There's only one you, okay? You bring that same you wherever you are, regardless of the circumstances. You don't leave part of yourself behind. You don't have a work you, an office you, a family you, a social you. You are you all the time. And I think that's very important when we come to look at God, right? So when we understand the nature of God, we look at the integrity of God, we see that God indeed has great integrity. The Bible tells us so. It says, therefore, his word displays that same unsurpassed integrity. Let's look at a couple of scriptures um, to help us with this. Um, Hebrews 6.18 says that it is impossible for God to lie. Only truth, honesty, and purity proceed from God. For that is very much his nature. He never tells us anything but truth and will never lead us astray. He will carry out what he says is reliable because God has such great integrity. So does his word. His word is truth. His word is pure. It is spiritually perfect. 
God's word has unsurpassed integrity and we can fully depend on it in all categories of our life. I find it instructive that right from get-go, right from the book of Genesis, when the enemy showed up, the very first thing he sought to question was the integrity of God. And he said, four words, has God indeed said? That's the integrity of God being questioned. So we can see that integrity is um, very important for us to understand vis-a-vis -vis the nature of God. Um, I think this is also more incredible when we look at um, what's happening, particularly in the larger uh, global world. You heard, you've heard the term fake news, you know, coming up regularly. So everything is being attacked, the integrity of presidents, the integrity of nations, everything is under the attack uh, of this uh, spirit, let me put it that way. John 1 um, captures the essence of God and the nature of God and his word. I love the Amplified Bible. It says, in the beginning, before all times, was the Word. That's Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made and come into existence through him, and without him not even one thing was made that has come into being. In him was life and the power to bestow life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not understand it or overpower it or appropriate it or absorb it, and it is unreceptive to it. So God's word tells us that God and himself are one, right? That's John chapter 1. God is consistent. I'm just going to give you a couple of scriptures. You can go and check those online uh, later when you have uh, some time. Um, God is consistent and unchanging. That's Hebrews 13.8. It says the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has no variation. He remains the same. He cannot be improved upon. God is not an iPhone, so there's no improved version of God, right? He cannot be reduced. He's eternal, Psalms 102 verse 27. He is self-existing, that is Exodus 3, 13 to 14. So I trust in this very short intro, I've helped you understand the definition of integrity as something that is incorruptible, is a state of being whole, honest, and fair. Um, God by nature, character remains consistent eternally. The integrity of his word is based on his person and his character, and an understanding of the integrity of God in light of a kingdom mindset is critical for us as believers.